So, before I get started, I, I would like to get back. So, whose keys are these? Because <laughs> they were on the window seal. There's this popularized, you know, lean startup approach. And when I read that, your most recent blog, it sort of made me think about that in a sense, it's, you know, listen, learn, iterate. And back when you started CCC, did that exist? In yeah, your, oh yeah, I think, I think that, that, you know, raising the bar has been the job since the beginning of time, you know, I mean, so I think the, uh, it didn't have to do with, you know, uh, being lean, it had to do with iteration. Yeah. And iteration, um, you know, 30, 40 years ago, the, the Japanese had Kanzai, which was a whole mm -hmm. process of continuous improvement. And mm -hmm. that's how uh, things get better. And you just, you do it, and then you measure it, and you figure out what didn't work, and then you do it again. Yeah. And I, I always say it's like ironing. I've never ironed anything, but you know, allegedly you go back over and over, it's straighter and straighter. <laughs> yeah. But, but that process of iteration is the strongest single discipline that we have at the school. Yeah. Um, and we really do think that every single thing that you do can get better. Motivation, real motivation, is completely internal. It's completely internal. It's not about prizes and toys and stuff like that. And so the job was to identify goals and to show people a path to get there. And then the motivated ones will get there and the rest of the people will work somewhere else. One of the things that's really challenging about uh, the startup business is that the single toughest job is to be the sales manager. And yeah. the reason it is, is because everybody else is engaged in this massive kumbaya, you know, feel good thing about a family and we're all in it together. And a good sales manager is find somebody every month. You know? yeah. uh, and that's really tough. It's really an ostracizing kind of thing to be that person. But if you don't find somebody who wants to do it and is willing to do it, you're going to end up with a mediocre company. I think a separate part of this thing with respect to a startup is it really isn't something where everybody has to go to bowling on Wednesday night and love each other and go out Friday nights and have beer. You know, um, if, if you model like that, what you end up with is too many people who look like you or resemble you. And yeah. To build a successful organization, you absolutely do need to have a whole spectrum of people. And you, you know, talent tends to come in a package deal. And some very talented people don't bathe, and some want to work at night, and some, you know, there's just a lot of stuff. And you have to make room. The biggest job in building a team is to make room for the different personalities, and also eventually to get to the point where if some people just want to have a job, as long as they really do their job and put their heart into it, that's okay. Uh, if, it, if it didn't save me time, save me money, or make me more productive, mm -hmm. it wasn't a, a business, it was a nice idea, or whatever it was. Um, about two years ago, I amended that to say that there was a completely new behavior driver that we never really understood, and that was status. Mm -hmm. And we, we always knew status was important, but we didn't ever understand, and this, this has to do with badges and gamification yeah. and really everything, but. It, it mostly has to do with human nature, and it's that we can now confer status, we can now measure status, we can now publish it, and so guess what? People give a shit, and, yeah. you know, and actually even money maxes out, but if you ever go into a bar at just about any technology conference anywhere in the world now, you see at least a few people in the bar and they're going like this, okay? And what they're doing is running up the cycles on their Nike <laughs> fuel bag, Right. So, so that they, they can brag to other people that they ran further and longer. Yeah, you know, actually, they didn't run at all. But it was like, whoa, you know. So why would anybody do that? You know, uh, because we keep score. That's yeah. why. FOMO stands for fear of missing out, and it's, mm -hmm. a, it's really a disease that started in New York, where whatever you're doing, somebody is doing something cooler and better. Like, <laughs> and there's another forty things that you can't even get to, right? So. So we call this manufactured addiction, and it's it's just that you're gonna if you're notified that three of your friends are doing X or did Y or you know are ahead of you and something, you're just gonna get busy. It's just the nature of yeah. stuff. So 
Um, that's going to change sales and training and education and just about everything. Thank <laughs> you.